All right, guys, uh, we're really closing in on everything we need to for this chapter, but of course, there's just some busy, busy work, and a lot of conceptual things that need to be checked off before we can move on. Um, a lot of these results will be used elsewhere in the book, so we just got to finish strong. The statement is, uh, it looks like a spherical waveform uh, uh, of the electric field is A sine theta over R cosine KR minus omega T minus 1 over kr sine kr minus omega t in the fiat direction. A. Show that E obeys all four Maxwell's equations in a vacuum and find the associated magnetic field. B. Calculate the pointing vector average s over a full cycle to get the intensity vector i. Does it point in an expected direction? Does it fall off like r to na or like the uh, inverse square relation as it should? And C, integrate I dA over a spherical surface oops, to determine the total power radiated. All right, so again, if we're in a vacuum, we know that rho and I are zero. So Gauss's law, the divergence of E goes to zero. And uh, when we take the spherical divergence, good to go. Same thing with the curl. We need it uh, for Faraday's law. Again, uh, I'm not going to put every component there. And uh, we'll just take what we need for the E phi at, or E phi components, plug that in. We'll let U equal KR minus omega T. And we need to show that uh, we can find the magnetic field from this. After we calculate the divergent, or the curl, excuse me, take everything you can as far as uh, derivatives are concerned. Uh, we see here that once we solve for dBdt, negative, of course, and we plug in our components. We had a lot of simplifying to do. And then we uh, simplify that down for the r hat and theta hat. Take the derivative for theta. We get 2 sine cosine thanks to chain rule. So the sine factors cancel out for our r hat. And then for the r derivative, we have a uh, uh, what looks like a product rule with the 1 over, uh, 1 over kr and sine u. Ugh, gross. Just be very careful with all the negative signs, things of that nature. Uh, so it's up to us to clean this up really good. And what we see here is that we can clean up the R hat component pretty quick. We get 2 E naught cosine theta over R squared bracket cosine U minus sine U over KR R hat. Similarly, we have an E naught sine theta over R with everything in that bracket in theta hat direction. So to find B, we need to integrate with respect to T. And I'll just put the notes on the integrals for cosine and sine there, given that we already had a u sub in. So we can fast forward this process, and we see that we have a negative b is equal to the same thing with the integration factors. I highlighted all the negatives in red because they're going to cancel out here soon um, when we factor them. Uh, yeah, so after that, uh, I factored out a negative for the theta direction, simply to keep it more compact. But we're good to go with the uh, B field there. Now what we need to do is test this B field and make sure it is divergentless. So again, plug in everything we need for the divergence and their respective components. Uh, cancel out what we can, and uh, let's see if it simplifies. Well, sure enough, uh, what we're going to have to do is a little bit of color coordination after we factor out some common factors here, which were 2 e naught k cosine theta over omega r squared. And from the first part of the divergence, we get a cosine uh, minus cosine u over k squared or r squared minus sine u over k squared. Second part, we get a minus cosine, a plus cosine over k squared r squared all color coordinated, so you see they cancel through um, as expected. Uh, but dang, man, that is some messy calculation. Of course, now we have to do an Ampere Maxwell, so we gotta take the curl, make sure it's equal to one over C, D, E, D, T. Uh, okay, so plug in accordingly for the respective components. C simplify very, very carefully, okay? The only component we have there that doesn't cancel out to zero elsewhere is the phi hat. So be very careful with both of those derivatives. Cancel away as much as you can. Take the derivative. Okay. 
And um, as you see, we have a lot to cancel. So that curl is the only thing of focus right now. Uh, you'll see the equal sign get buried in there. Uh, when we see the second um, right arrow there, uh, implies that we just simplify it through after the derivative. A lot, a lot of cancels, a lot, a lot of cancels. Um, fair enough. And now on the next page, we'll go ahead and try to simplify it even more. We see that um, we get a big bracket for the left-hand side since we can't factor everything out, but we can go ahead and in the red, add in the, um, for the C squared. Yeah, we'll just multiply and uh, coordinate the K over omegas and uh, see what we can do to simplify given that C is equal to, uh, uh, what was it, omega over K, something like that. So we plug in the wave numbers there, and we're good to go. Uh, cancel away on everything that you possibly can. And uh, as you see, it eventually turns out, if you follow all the equal signs enough, that we get everything canceling, and we have an equivalent statement. So I'll leave all the work there for you to verify. Uh, I'm not going to talk through every step, but I think by this point, you're used to it. Now, the pointing vector S is equal to 1 over mu naught uh, E cross B. Uh, okay, so we're going to have to do a double cross product because we have to distribute this. So let's be aware that the phi hat needs to be crossed with the R hat, and the phi hat needs to be crossed with the theta hat. So I'm breaking that up into two sections. Okay, I know all these uh, parentheses are going to get annoying, so bear with us. Uh, but then for the first part, we have phi cross r and then phi cross theta, which boils down here. Phi cross r gives us theta hat, and phi cross theta gives us negative r, which the negative signs end up canceling. We got a lot of the same things that we could factor out, and so we do. We see we get e naught squared sine theta over mu naught omega r squared with that bracket, cosine u minus sine u kr. That's all factored out. Now we're just canceling what we can. Okay, now that we're simplified down somewhat, we have theta hat in one direction going nice after we uh, tidy everything up with that monstrosity. And then we have r hat tidied up after we distribute everything. Why do we do this? Well, you'll see soon that we have to take the average value. So we have to distribute that bracket of cosine u and sine u over kr into everything. So then our pointing vectors, e naught squared sine theta, mu naught omega r, and curly brackets with all that nonsense in the theta direction, and sine theta times the brackets in the r hat direction. Okay, now let's make a couple more notes. That way we don't have to sit there and set up a thousand integrals. Averaging over a full cycle using sine u cosine u equals zero, since they cancel out. Uh, if you look at the integrals, all their areas cancel over 2 pi in their product anyways. Um, and then here we have uh, sine squared u equal cosine squared u, which equals 1 half. Good to go there. Uh, and then we see uh, we get the intensity i is equal to the average value, time average value of s. And, uh, well, with the products, we see that a lot of things go to zero. Uh, you see that the squares, you get one half minus one half in the numerator. Bye bye. Don't like you. Don't miss you. Um, and then further, uh, we see that for the r hat, we get that zero from the sine cosine again, and then the one half one half in the numerator. So we get a lot of cancellations. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Love it. Okay. With that, everything in the theta hat cancels to zero, and we're left with only something in the r hat. And uh, once we simplify down, we just get k over 2 times sine theta multiplied by all the constants. Uh, here we see that k and omega give us that factor C, color coordinated in red, so we can actually see what we're dealing with. And uh, we see that the intensity is E squared, or E naught squared, sine squared, theta over 2, mu naught, C, R squared in the R hat direction. And it points in the R direction and falls off as 1 over R squared, as we would expect. Okay, pretty cool. Uh, as for a spherical wave. So the power is just the integral of i dot dA. Well, here, uh, dA is in the r hat direction. 
So we have r squared sine theta d theta d uh, phi. So if we take all that, we see that the r squares cancel. Nice. We can split up the integrals. Nice. And uh, yeah, we can evaluate pretty easy. The phi integral gives us 2 pi. The sine cubed integral gives us uh, 4 thirds. And we're, easy, we're able to uh, simplify that quite easy. The p or the, yeah, power is equal to 4 pi over 3 times e naught squared over mu naught c. So we're good to go. Not bad, but definitely messy.